Welcome to the another video lecture on ENT. I am Dr. Jawad Ahmad and today I will be covering the nasal septal abscess with you guys. Now first of all, uh, the terms require a little bit of explanation. What exactly is an abscess and what exactly is the nasal septum? So an, an abscess is actually a collection of the pus in a confined pocket that collects in the various tissues, organs and the spaces within the human body. So it's actually the collection of pus within the body anywhere and it is usually confined in a, uh, a pocket so uh, the abscess usually develop after an infection um, and this infection is usually bacterial and those bacteria love to produce pus and that pus one accumulates within the body so that form the abscess moreover the nasal septum we have explained it in the anatomy of the nasal septum uh, in the previous video and here just a brief overview so this nasal septum is actually this septum that divides the nasal cavity into two halves it is divided into the columnar septum then the membranous septum and finally we have the septum proper which is the main septum the columnar and membranous septums are covered by the skin and this whole septum proper is covered by the mucous membrane now the septal cartilage uh, the outer portion of the septal cartilage is covered by the uh, its own the cart uh, the cartilage membrane that is called as the perichondrium and when the perichondrium and the mucous membrane overlying it they combine together so those are called as mucoperichondrial membrane so now what will happen that the pus in the septal abscess will develop in between the septal cartilage and the mucoperichondrial flap as you can see here actually it is a picture of the septal hematoma here you can see this is the septal cartilage this septal hematoma develops in between the septal cartilage and the mucoperichondrial membrane now the abscess actually develops secondary to the se uh, septal hematoma that means the septal hematoma get infected so as a result the bacteria over here produces pus and this area is then filled with pus and that accumulation of pus over here in the nasal septum is called as nasal septal abscess so it is a collection of pus in between the nasal septum and mucoperichondrial membrane let's talk about its cause its causes so mainly it is due to the secondary infection of the septal hematoma which we have just discussed it may follow the furuncle of the nose or upper lip usually the stuff or is low to cause infection the carbuncle and furuncle of the skin and uh, of the up nose and upper lip and that infection may go inside the nose into the septum and may cause uh, the formation of the septal abscess moreover it may also develop due to some acute infection such as typhoid or measles etc now let's talk about its clinical features so it's again since it is uh, a pocket like swelling in the nasal septum so you will see these swellings inside the nose and at the septum so smooth bilateral swelling if you uh, on examination the swelling will be smooth and these are bilateral moreover the congestion of the septal mucosa will be present the septal mucosa will be congested due to the inflammation and that is due to the infection so there will be swelling and congestion due to the inflammation the next thing is there will be bilateral nasal obstruction along with pain and tenderness of the dorsum of the nose so bilateral nasal obstruction due to because you have muscles so that won't allow the inflow of the air and along with that uh, this this is a high yield point the pain and the tenderness because in the septal hematoma you will again have this kind of swelling the nasal obstruction and most of these symptoms but over there this pain and tenderness at the dorsum of the nose that won't be that much as it is present in the septal abscess in the septal abscess there will be tenderness and pain of the dorsum of the nose moreover frontal headache as in septal hematoma and here as well so that is again and uh, moreover there will be uh, systemic manifestation may occur so since it's an infection so that is also a differentiating point that along with the abscess you may have fever or chills etc moreover the submandibular lymph nodes may be enlarged as we know that the uh, trained uh, this uh, this area will be drained to the submandibular lymph nodes and that infection may lead over there and that will cause the uh, submandibular lymph node enlargement so the points to keep in mind the clinical feature is that uh, the patient may have the history of the hematoma and that hematoma may have developed into the 
abscess so he will have bilateral nasal obstruction and along with the obstruction he will have pain and tenderness he may have fever or enlarged lymph nodes submandibular enlarged uh, enlarged submandibular lymph nodes next thing is treatment so the treatment you know the basic rule for the abscess that abscess anywhere in the body should be drained so you should drain this abscess as well now incision is given at the most independent part of this uh, abscess and that is why that is because you have to reopen this incision for two to three days in order to drain all the pus that accumulates again within this abscess so incision is given at the most dependent part and moreover the pus and the necrosed part of the cartilage are removed by the suction so you have to apply suction and any pus or any uh, necrosis that has occurred in the cartilage due to this infection so you have to take all all those out by suction so you give the incision at the most dependent part you apply the suction and um, and remove the pus and the necrosis part moreover in daily reopening we have uh, discussed that this is for that if any more pus accumulates in there so you have to drain that as well and you have to give the person systemic antibiotics for about 10 days to fight off that infection its complication again septal uh, since it is an infection it may cause the septal uh, cartilage necrosis and that necrosis we know that this septal cartilage this septum actually provide the support to the dorsum of the nose so once that support is gone what will happen that saddle nose deformity may occur this uh, dorsum of the nose may settle down because the support is lost and as a result you will have here you can see the normal nose and then you can have this kind of settle nose deformity moreover septal perforation may occur if the septal cartilage is necrosed so what happen what will happen a hole will do will be developed in the uh, uh, septum and that is called a septal perforation i have discussed this whole topic in a separate video moreover meningitis and cavernous sinus thrombosis are also some of its complication so they may also develop that would be all for now thank you and subscribe my channel for further upcoming video and if there is any shortcoming leave them in the comment section below thank you